my name is Tanis and I, I do, let's say, real things when compared to just IT things or so. So, <clears throat> yeah. What, 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 uh, what I do is I, I design and our company manufactures uh, photography and um, cinematography accessories. One of the most known products of ours was the LCDVF that was a little magnifier that goes into the back of a DSLR cameras. And um, it has now been on, on the market for like three years already. And um, we have sold more than 20,000 units. And in, in this niche market, I think this is quite a bit. And I think I, I, I can say that, um, that we are one of the market leaders in, in this segment. So, but just for in introduction, I would say that these times, many of uh, cinematographers and videographers tend to film with these types of uh, DSLR photography cameras because these have really, really good appealing uh, images, uh, video images uh, coming out from these cameras. But it was, um, it was qu quite hard to handhold it or to, let's say, if, if one wanted to make a music video or a commercial, holding this type of camera, it was like, okay, you're doing a photography or whatever this type. So I decided to actually make this camera to look like a little bit more like a real camera. So, if I attach it to this type of shoulder mount, attach a viewfinder, now we have a real produ production grade camera with all the ergonomics, things like that. And what we do now is that we have a developed electronic viewfinder and we are developing the camera supports also. But electronic viewfinder to be used with absolutely any camera out there today that has HDMI output. So this is a little computer that can analyze uh, focusing, overexposure, things like that, that um, any camera operator would need. And thanks to our good partners, we, we are actually selling these already today and we developed it, let's, I think, in one and a half year. And it, it's, it, the internals are made in Estonia. Some of the plastic parts are made in China. If you're wondering that we have some manufacturing in China. But yeah, all the assembly and, uh, and things like that are done in-house in our little office in Tartu. So this is basically what we, or our company, has, has evolved over the three past years to coming from really, really, really simple loop type of LCD magnifier to this type of really complicated high-end electronics things. And okay. Now, um, Everything uh, began, oh, let's see, oh, there's some sort of errors, okay. Come on, Paul, see, Granan. Aha. Fog, it's a little mingy error, it's a little, flex. Okay. It, it all, for me, it all began with an idea to have, a, as, a, as a former camera operator, I wanted to have something that I could use these types of DSLR cameras with uh, and to arrive on the set of, a, let's say, commercial and movie making set or, or things like that, to hold the camera steadily in my hand, to see what is in focus, things like that. So I, I wanted to create something for myself. It was my, uh, my passionate idea. But, yeah, if, if you love your idea, soon you get really, really paranoid that maybe someone will steal your idea, things like that. And the first thing when I came up with the idea, I, was, um, I, I wanted to make sure that um, the idea is a feasible idea. 
So that, that means that basically I searched on Google and searched on other um, specialty forums on the internet to see if my idea is feasible, if it, it can be done, if there is enough market interest in it. I googled some more and googled some more and saw that uh, there are no such, such products on the market uh, back then. Now there, of course, are many. And uh, yeah, so my idea was almost original. It was based on some sort of other accessories and I just uh, evo basically evolved uh, the, the idea of, of some sort of slide viewing loops, but this is technical detail. Uh, yeah, and if we have competition, do we have any competition in regards of, let's say, original idea that, that turned out that there are some competition out there? Uh, it, it's good if there are like one or two or three comp competitive uh, uh, products on the market, but if there are like 20, it's, it's really hard uh, to compete then as a startup. Startups should be kind, kind of original and innovative and not just, let's say, more effective or more, uh, let's say, cheaper. You can't, uh, at least in, in Europe, I wouldn't uh, suggest to do just cheaper products or copies of some other products. It, uh, the new products the should, should be innovative or at least have some sort of edge over the competition at same or a little bit lower price tag, but not uh, like 50% uh, lower because uh, Chinese will fill in that market quite quickly. So, yes, if uh, one should always consider, consider if, uh, if uh, we have uh, uh, some sort of uh, competitive edge over, over uh, competitors. And, yeah, where was I? Yeah, yeah. And if, uh, after, after we, uh, we, we realized that uh, our products, for example, n had all, quite a bit of advantage uh, over, let's say, one competing product, uh, back then we had one uh, comp uh, competitor, uh, we just uh, saw that if we do a really, really simple but really cost-effective design to the product, we can sell it actually for uh, like 50% lower price. But it was also much uh, simpler and more rugged product. And this gave us enormous, uh, enormous uh, marketing value. Everybody on the internet were in, the, in this segment of, let's say, filmmaking. Everybody was like, okay, this is uh, really good and, uh, and uh, really, let's say, cheaper alternative to the, the one that existed, to the one product that existed back in the day. And then, then we decided, or I decided, I, I was doing it completely on my own. I decided that um, um, that I should uh, start producing um, this n new product, and but uh, but I don't have any engineering background. I don't have uh, any production background. I was graphics designer before I started with uh, this this stuff, and um, I just uh, looked around how to realize my ideas. What what I have to do? I I I. I happen to know how to do drawings in 3D programs. So I made some drawings and then I, um, I didn't know at all how to make prototypes, things like that. And yes, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, the realization, realization, okay. And one, one thing back then, when I, I imagined that I will, I will start the production, I will become like a manufacturer of this, this type of devices, I, I didn't realize actually that if one, mark, one wants to market a product, there is like 50% margin that goes to dealers. So if one thinks about um, making a new or designing or developing a new product, this must be said that at least 50% of the whole street price 
goes to the dealers and uh, retailers, things like that. So if I wanted to sell something for, let's say, 100 euros, I must make my profits out of uh, 50 euros, actually. So any idea about new product? I think this, this, this is, um, let's say, this is maybe only in my market segment or in, in photography segment or whatever this kind. But if, if, distributor, if you want to be attractive to distributors, you must give 50% off your, or let's say, street price. And this is, this is the first thing before you even start to developing the actual product. You must think uh, about that if you can bring it uh, out at that, that price level. I have uh, had many, many friends of mine who have also developed uh, new products and things like that, but they have all failed uh, to to attract distribution because well, it's, it's quite, uh, quite okay if you make a product for 80 euros and sell it for like 100, you earn some 20. But uh, at the, and then the street price is like uh, directly from the manufacturer and the, uh, all dealers want the, the street price to be 200. And then it's not uh, feasible to sell anymore because let's say it, it isn't competitive anymore. So that it's just the 50% rule. Okay. But, but where to begin with? As I said, I, I, made the, I, I was able to make my own drawings with the really, really basic um, 3D software. I think back then it was like for evaluation for 30 days. I downloaded that and uh, I made my first 3D drawings. And th then I was like, what, what next? What, what could be, how can I make it real? And then I just accidentally uh, stumbled uh, across 3D printing services from, uh, from, okay. And the, the other thing, if, if you can't do your own drawings or your own, let's say, engineering part, I, I think, I kind of can do my own engineering part, but if you can't do, just grabcat.com is a fantastic source of engineers, designers. You can just put up your competition, design competition or product development competition. You get your entries, you get the, the design that appeals to you the most. I think uh, I have used uh, a couple of times uh, this service also, and I, I think I have a debt to pay in this regard, <laughs> but yes. And, and the other thing, if you got your 3D files and the, let's say the design files, then you can just upload these to either shapeways.com, that is somewhere there, uh, and this is 3D printing services, and they can print not only some fragile 3D models, but they are really, really good working products. Um, and even in uh, stainless steel or bronze, uh, and then the metal metal printer is like like one meter wide, so you can do your own really really big metal prototypes if needed. Uh, yeah. And the the other thing is the protolabs.co.uk that uh, that actually makes. Uh, um, injection uh, molds also uh, for a small productions, let's say like 10,000 units, things like that. You can just upload your 3D models, they will analyze it for free, get you quotes, things like that. And they also have CNC machining and, and all the technicalities that you don't have to know about. Good, good engineer from CrabCAD and services for, from these two companies. And then you get all the information about uh, this type of technologies. And then you can ask uh, anyone on the net uh, for competing services and, and, and so on. Yes, so from these services we can, or you can order prototypes. And they, they, in the past making prototypes has been like really, really costly, costly procedure, but but let's say the, the physical prototype of, of, of this device, that costs like 300 euros at maximum. And on some 3D printing services online, you can either also order rubber parts to see how rubber parts work, let's say if they are ergonomic enough. Thing, yeah. And, and one, one, one slide that I didn't include is 
uh, if one could uh, visit uh, Euromold 2011 in Frankfurt, go there and if you have idea about that, that you want to bring a new product to the market but uh, doesn't, that don't know how to do that, Euromold in Frankfurt, the big, big trade show. There are all the prototyping services, all the injection molding services. It's really big trade show and uh, one will, would find all the context needed to bring a product to life. It's, it's not that cost effective if you do it, every, if you do it yourself, but if, if you can too. Let's say I am always doing the finishing work on my prototypes myself because I wanted the, the, the look or even the texture of the, the plastic to be like I wanted it to be. So yeah, other times I'm just walking around the paint shop with a f camera in my hand and seeing what kind of textures are like the camera housing textures, for, for example. Yeah, and, and uh, I, um, when I was first doing this type of prototyping work, I was hoping, okay, I will do one prototype only. But uh, one thing is to see the prototype in computer, and the other thing is to, to actually hold it and see it, how, how, it, uh, how it works or how it looks and feels. And, and now I remember that I think even in here, we, we had some 3D printing services, so you don't ha have to order online if you don't want it. Yeah. Yes, and the, the, this is uh, one thing that I, I realized immediately when I was doing my first prototypes, that, that even, even if we take all the ca camera operators that are like my cl clients, if... if, if uh, if they test it, they, there are so many different opinions so that once I just gave it uh, one prototype to my mother and one prototype to my mother and one prototype to my little two-year-old uh, kid to see what will break or what they can't understand about it. And yeah, it, it paid off uh, really well. Uh -huh. And uh, th then, then let's say you have your working prototype and everything seems to be uh, like ready. You can take really great photographs about your product and begin like with marketing. But th th then you one realizes again this uh, paranoia might kick in that if you show the working model or the prototype to the general public, someone will mm, maybe steal it. So then we arrive <laughs> the intellectual property at the intellectual property yeah and and the first thing that i was asked about was uh, do you have some patents or your on your stuff uh, you know, how how can you protect it and then i was like oh okay i don't have the money to patent anything and the, the all the patenting for me and this is my personal opinion for a startup company that wants to be quick on the market don't patent anything if, it's, if it isn't really, really, really big. Because uh, it will take so much time and effort and so much money and because the patent is a business for other businessmen. And um, the, for me, for me I, I just then realized that there is uh, such thing like European design registration. It, it only costs like 300 euros per one product. And you might have versions of your products, so might, you might end up with a spending like 1,000 euros. And then you can register the look and the, or the, the drawings of your product, uh, so that if some Chinese company copies your product, you can immediately take action against uh, these guys and you can protect, uh, let's say, with the European de design registration, you can protect yourself all over the Europe and this has paid us off very, very well. It, it, it's, it's really easy to send the design registration to any of the importers, let's say in Germany, we have really quite, quite a bit of uh, piracy problems importing. They are importing from China, uh, copying our products. We sent them uh, uh, our design registration and voila, they can't sell it anymore. And um, th this is really easy and this, is, this can be done via email and not in court and not, not uh, 
yeah. And then th this, this is, <laughs> yeah. The, okay. <laughs> yes. For 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 me, uh, I'm I'm a little bit paranoid against this patenting thing. <laughs> oh yeah. This was the EU design registration thing. Yes, about the trademarks. Trademarks are also effective only then when you can can protect yourself um, from, let's say, pirates or the counterfeit products branded with your your logos or company name. So for for us, we did uh, trademarks registration in China, and uh, but uh, we can protect ourselves in China really well, let's say. So for us, the USA and the EU trademarks were also really cost effective and, uh, and really good. But when, when you are thinking about trademarks, or everybody wants to have some sort of name on their product, or, so please don't use um, the, let's, uh, the, for example, our product LCDVF was like LCD viewfinder. It was a short of LCD VF. Uh, and then uh, US uh, trademark office refused uh, to uh, register our trademark because it was just uh, a, a, a sh short word. Or, or by then it has become so famous that it was like, uh, like Kleenexes or, or like fairies for a dishwashing liquid. Or, and yeah, so actually we lost our U.S. trademarks and became uh, Kinotechnik instead because this is, I, I think we can't register this in Estonia <laughs> because it's a word. But yeah. Okay, now we can start with the marketing. We have done all the registration part. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what I did with our first prototypes Actually, I was even manufacturing uh, copies of uh, prototypes. I was, hand, I, I was casting on my own, my own pre-production products in our office uh, using some sort of uh, silicone molds and, and uh, polyurethane plastics. But yeah, I sent these out to all the, uh, all the opinion leaders, uh, bloggers that uh, reviewed uh, this stuff back then, and I get the, everybody was like talking about our products. And while they were talking about our products, I tried to find uh, companies who could actually provide us with the injection molded parts, with the tools to do so. Of course, I asked many, many Estonian companies, but there, for tool making, there aren't, aren't too many of these. And uh, soon it became apparent that uh, I, as a startup, I didn't have enough money or, or to proceed uh, with the production in Estonia. So I, I looked up uh, this weird place, Alibaba.com, and I didn't have any documentation on my product. So I just had prototypes and I had 3D CAD drawing that was just a 3D model without any annotations, nothing was there. And I, I found one company that uh, did similar, uh, similar products and then I contacted this Chinese company and they were, yeah, yeah, we're doing this to that company. I was, okay, I have this product for, from that company and this is really good. And, and th then um, we started the cooperation with the Chinese, Chinese, yeah, Chinese company. That, uh, and their leading times were half, um, let's say, double the speed. If, if I wanted to do my tools in Estonia, it was like six weeks, and tools in China, it was like three weeks. And the price difference, let's, it was like two and a half, half years ago, price difference back then was almost six times. It was like uh, 6,000 uh, euros in Estonia, and 1,000, actually it was 800 US dollars back then in China. Now in China they have like tripled the prices, but it's still kind of cost effective. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, I was lucky uh, in, in the first place that even if I didn't have any documentation on my product idea, uh, they managed actually to deliver the 
first uh, production models uh, that were were okay, and we we could. Okay, yes, and the the what I mean by the lost in translation uh, is is that uh, we don't have any common sense with Chinese people at all. Nothing. You want something, you say, oh yeah, I will pay. you have one part that costs like 20 cents. You are willing to pay like 22 to have it really high quality. They make it for 18, but really low quality. And they are like saving for you all the time, saving, saving, saving something. But they are also shaving actually. So it's, 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 it's really hard if you th think that they think like you. Then, then, uh, then it doesn't work. And uh, try, try it out if you are communicating with a Chinese company, let's say online or with uh, Skype, or you, if you feel that you can't com communicate your ideas, trash that contact, trash that company, move on. I, I would say that far that in Taiwan, the com communication is muy bien, but um, in, in China it's, it's, it's hard. I, I would say that as far as I have now managed to speak in um, Chinese English, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. Yeah, but if, if you feel comfortable, uh, let's say, with, in online chat with a Chinese representative, then proceed. If not, don't proceed. And uh, uh, about, again, about good documentation on, on your product is that you, um, if, if you want to make changes afterwards with the Chinese company, it's really hard, really time com, um, consu consuming. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's much harder than developing a new product or new contact with another company and paying they, them the tool making costs or whatever. It's so hard. This, uh, at least this is what is my experience. Yep. Okay. Selling the, I, I was, at, at first I was also like coming from a really big office where, where I worked with uh, 300 other computer specialists and I was always under impression that everything takes place online. Everything is online, and I will sell my products online, and this I will be really, really good situations or a situation. But then again, still today we can't accept international payments uh, with the PayPal. I think that that will soon change. But but yeah, PayPal. If you want to do big business, or let's say more than four four thousand euros in two weeks, then you will be your contract will be ended one-sidedly by PayPal. Because Estonia is listed lower than Lithuania or Poland, uh, Estonia is like really, a really bad place for, uh, in, in the eyes of PayPal. But yeah, hopefully this, this will soon end. But back, back to the selling these things, uh, I sold first like 200 units I sold online and then PayPal confiscated all my money and I was <laughs> completely broke. But then the word was out there and I, was, I had sent out like 100 units or 200 and then the purchase, purchasers from big retail companies and uh, uh, dealers all around the world, they were just sending us emails. Oh yeah, okay, this is, yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, we're sending us uh, uh, emails, can we be your sole distributors? Can we do this and that? Because the product was interesting to purchasers in uh, retail companies. And this was, then it was really easy. Yeah, let's do this deal, this is deal and this deal. And yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, this was the slide. And um, of course, every every dealer or retail uh, company wants to become your uh, your uh, sole distributor in certain region, and and this is something that uh, these days, when logistics and communications are highly efficient, 
uh, one should not give the sole distribution rights out too easily. But yeah, in the USA, I, I think uh, first years USA for us was like 50% of all the markets. It was really good for us, but, but it was only then attractive when we could um, give the 50% discount from the street price. Because the, the middleman in the USA wants also to live and then all the retails, uh, retail stores and, and so on. But now if, if one dreams about uh, going to US market, it's, it's really hard for it to do directly because then you must have your insurance on your products. It's, 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 it's for a small company like us or companies like our company, it was completely out of the question. We can't just go from big retail uh, company to another to do our demos. They just won't listen. It's much easier to give the give the discount to your sole distributor in the USA, and then then you will just sit back sit back and uh, develop new products. Uh, yeah, and then then when we arrived at the conclusions, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, the the first point, uh, as I said, uh, is is that that if uh, the the most potent ideas come from from loving the the stuff that you do or missing something that uh, as uh, we are at first I was uh, saying that our company is like uh, like like a ammunition company or, the, or the, like in, in the war times because we c we can sell the ammunition <laughs> and this this was a feeling it basically it's, it's it's like filling a space that does exist oh yeah <laughs> uh -huh, yeah and um, in this uh, the, the second point goes especially for Estonia or Estonian inventors or, or guys like that. All the time I got calls and I have meetings with uh, fellow inventors, let's say so, or, and they are extremely paranoid, always signing up some sort of a NDAs, uh, always like, they are like, give us all the information you know, and we won't give you any information that we know. Please help us, but we we are not able to help you. Uh, I, I, uh, let's say I, I'm willing to share my context in China or my expertise in some field, but then they they most of them refuse to even say what their product is, and then I say uh, sign the NDA, and then it, uh, they come up with the product that is existing on the market, and then I have signed something that is. Like they they are threatening me with a course. <laughs> it, it, the, the, this paranoia stuff is something that I, I really really don't like because if you are really paranoid and you are protecting your intellectual property and heavily investing in it, you you won't bring your products in the market in the um, right or fast time frame. Yeah, the the thir third point is that. Uh, uh, Goes for the products that uh, that or the for for consu at consumers standpoint uh, is that uh, um, if if something uh, could be made more cheaply or let's say more affordable, then this uh, isn't actually directly any innovation, and and the you never can uh, trump the Chinese clones that uh, come right after your product, so. Being innovative and, and original is, is one of the goals. Yeah, and what I did uh, with my first product is that I uh, put up a thread in some sort of cinema fo cinematography forum asking people what they want of this and this and this product. How do they, th uh, how do they like my design? Uh, I, it was uh, viewed like 30,000 uh, 30, times, yeah. And, and uh, I was, then I, I got the confidence to proceed with my, my idea to invest in the production. And, uh, and let's say the, the first product that we have, like, oh, yeah, I, th I think we had the sold these for like 1 million euros. The, the, it, it is the, yeah, 
the, the turnover is like that. And the investment that I made back then was like uh, 10,000 euros or so. So it's it's pre pretty good uh, return of investment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And the, the, the thing that uh, don't tell the whole story is uh, even with, if patenting stuff or re registering the stuff, the simpler the patent or design registration is, the, the less will your competition know what really goes into your product, what gives it the competitive edge. We have a really, really, really original formula for our eyepieces uh, for the viewfinders, and th this is uh, something that we won't list anywhere. How how to do that? Yeah, and then the, um, you can just uh, sit in your even in your own home office or whatever, and uh, and upload drawings to all these prototyping services. And in terms uh, the the uh, shape ways that I showed you. Earlier, this is like uh, after 10 days, UPS uh, courier will arrive at your door, bringing you the prototypes. It's uh, and it's it's really cost-effective. Uh, these days, uh, um, you know, the some jewelers or the artists are making uh, one-off uh, uh, jewelry with uh, this type of services. So it's 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 become quite quite affordable. Yeah, this was the 50% discounting. Uh -huh. What is this? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is supposed to be that when you are arranging the production, you should remember the 50% discount thing. Yeah. Okay. Be this much, this pretty much covers everything, so I don't have to speak anymore. Okay. <laughs>